All right, welcome back to another audio tutorial in Pico 8. Uh, this time I'm going to be going over the music editor and um, making a really basic song. So we're going to go ahead and get started by creating uh, just a bass line. And we're going to do that with some of the tips and techniques that I showed you in the earlier videos. Um, so hopefully you've watched those and this should be fairly straightforward. Okay, so here's a, a straightforward bass line. I'm using the uh, fade out technique that I was explaining earlier. Okay, and uh, yeah, it's not too exciting, but basically we've got that, and then we're gonna add in a lead line, and that's going to sound something like this. I'm kind of making it up as I go. Um, and we're going to go ahead and fade this out as we go. And this is going to use the slide technique that I was explaining before. So basically, it's smoothing out the fades. And you'll notice that I didn't put it at the beginning of the note. Uh, that's because I don't want it to slide from E to B and B to F sharp and whatever. So you can kind of hear how that sounds. And uh, we can go ahead and put it into the music editor. So let's go ahead and switch over to that. That's going to be in the music note. So it's a new tab. And if this is the first time you're looking at it. Uh, there's not a whole lot here. There's a bunch of patterns. You can have up to 64. So it's kind of like the sound limit. There's only 64 patterns that you can have. Uh, but you can have up to four channels playing at the same time. And the way you do that is by activating them with this little uh, checkbox. So we're going to add in the bass line for the first pattern. And then we're going to go to the second pattern and add in the bass line and the lead. And then uh, at any point you want to play back, uh, you can click on the pattern you want to play. And, and it's worth noting that this works exactly like the other uh, number inputs. You left click to increase and you right click to decrease. Um, and so if a pattern is next to each other and there is uh, data in it, or basically channels turned on, it will advance to the next pattern. Um, so let's go ahead and listen to how this sounds. Okay, yeah, that sounds pretty good actually. Um, now we're going to go ahead and make a loop, and the way that we do that is with these loop arrows and we're gonna set them. So this is the loop start, and this is the loop end. And basically the loop end tells it, once we finish this pattern, we're gonna loop back to the closest uh, loop start. So if we actually set the loop start here, it would just repeat this pattern over and over and over again. Uh, but we're gonna wanna go back to this first part, and uh, let's go ahead and play it from pattern one. Okay, so we can see that it jumps back to pattern zero and it continues on and it will just loop that over and over. Now you may be wondering, okay, so why is there a stop button here? And that's because since there's 64 patterns, you're kind of limited. And if you start to run out of uh, patterns, you need a way to stop um, a particular portion of music or uh, it may even be a sound effect that has like a chord pattern or something that you play 
and you want it to stop. But like I said, if any channels are turned on in the next music musical pattern, it will automatically advance, and this basically stops it from automatically advancing. So if we turned it on here, you can see that it automatically stops and it doesn't advance on to uh, zero one. Now, one of the cool things about the music editor is that you can kind of edit on the fly. So we can go ahead and make a pattern two and I want to activate, um, or actually want to edit live this particular pattern. Now, I'm not sure if this is a bug, um, but if you are to play something in the keyboard, you may notice that uh, it's actually playing pattern two, or the, the sound two. And the reason for that is because that is what's active in the sound editor. So we actually have to switch to sound three in order to edit this and hear the changes. Um, and it also takes into account the settings that you do or that you set up in the sound editor. So it's a little funky, but, um, but it works. And so let's go ahead and try and add in like a, a harmony. Um, bear with me, I'm kind of doing this on the fly. kind of works. Um, sure. Okay, so then we can add in the uh, same volume effects that we did earlier. And the nice thing about this is you can actually see uh, what effects you put in different columns um, in the different channels. So we can mimic those effects and we can kind of eyeball it and make sure that they match up. Um, <laughs> Uh, and like I said, it it does know whatever the uh, closest loop point is. So if we set the loop point on pattern one and uh, have it on pattern two, we can see that it jumps back to pattern one. Okay, so that's the basics of the music editor. Uh, one thing that I did want to show, I'm going to load up another file, and uh, this is a, a Mega Man file that I kind of threw together, and the thing about this Mega Man song is it's actually in 3-4 time, and it's, a, it's kind of a cover version, but you're going to notice that there's some issues when I play it back. <laughs> Okay, so the problem is we get to the bottom of the pattern or essentially the end of the notes and Pico 8 doesn't know to end at that point. Uh, so there is a way to fix this. It's a little bit tricky, but you have to take the speed of all of the patterns that you're using and you need to take it times three divided by four uh, if you're doing three, four time because it is literally this value times three divided by four. So if you're doing seven, eight time, you would need to take this value times seven divided by eight. Uh, so what I did is I created a separate audio pattern and gave it a speed of 12. And then I 
put it at the beginning. And the reason that it's at the beginning is because Pico 8 takes the length of the first non-repeating uh, channel and it ends at the bottom of that pattern. So you'll notice that this actually sounds correct now. Okay, uh, and you might have seen that this channel actually starts to jump ahead of these other three channels. Um, now you could put notes in this, uh, but it's gonna it's gonna be a little out of sync. So again, it's gonna be kind of a syncopated rhythm, and it might work for some songs, but it again, I mean, just leaving this empty is fine. And what you will find is you can actually then use or reuse this channel for sound effects later on. Uh, so it's really not a bad idea to just leave this blank. Um, so that is the basics of the music editor and uh, how to do unusual time signatures. And I hope you found it useful. Uh, so I look forward to hearing what kind of music you make in Pico 8.